You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello and welcome back to episode 21 of the Claret and Blue podcast, the fourth or fifth episode of the week. I've absolutely lost count. Do you know what day it is? Do, do you know what's going on? It's um, Carabao Cup final Eve. Eve. Yes. That's what it is. It makes a weird wobbling noise when you bang oh, your sorry. hands on the table. Sorry. Oh, hands in my pockets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Aston Villa at Wembley on Sunday so obviously it's Friday we just had the press conferences from uh, Dean Smith and Pep Guardiola they've not really said anything massively interesting just to be before we get onto that you know on. you've said about um, we don't know what day it is yeah it's actually leap year day tomorrow isn't it the day before the final is it oh 29th, 29th February. I just wonder how many footballers were born on a leap year <laughs> or how, how many footballers are kind of actually 28 years old but they're, they're only 7 or whatever it is <laughs> is that have how it ever, works have you, not ever, have you not ever thought about that nope Never. Oh, just interesting. That'd be weird. I, know, I think I know somebody from school. I had a birthday on February 29th. And we always used to say, oh, it's not your birthday this year. Well, my, I don't son, really know what my son was nearly February the 29th, um, but it didn't quite happen. But I just thought, God, that'd be great, wouldn't it? But only having to kind of shell out for birthday presents every four years. <laughs> but surely you just celebrate it the day before or day after, don't you? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. What an interesting start Speaking of the about podcast. celebrating the day after, I mean, I'm going to have a massive hangover on Monday. <laughs> well... Probably either way, yes, regardless of result. <laughs> I would drown in my sorrows or massive celebrations. Obviously, everyone knows Man City on Wembley. On Wembley? At Wembley. Oh, here we go. Great start. How are you feeling about this game, generally? Are you scared, nervous, excited? I tell you, and this is not just me um, blowing smoke. I tell you what's really got me in the mood, and it's a very convenient plug. It's listening to the thing you did with Ron Ackes. Oh, lovely and, little and, segue. And, and Tony Daly. I mean, again, <laughs> people have I've said it ad nauseum. People must be bored of me saying it. It's my era, wasn't it? You oh, was know, it? It was. It was it your, I don't know if I mentioned it before. It was your Rotterdam. I think it was my Rotterdam, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in for more of the same. Um, yeah, so it just kind of got the uh, the old hairs standing up, well, not on my head, the old hair standing <laughs> up on the, the back of my neck. It was just brilliant to hear. The, the bit that I liked, I know people are thinking, well, we've listened to it ourselves, so what are you going they on about? They might not have, this is a well, great They don't great need to bother point. now, then, do they? <laughs> it was just Tony, Tony Daly saying he was drunk on the occasion. Oh, I love that. And he might have had like half a mouthful of champagne out of the trophy that's uh, yeah. made him paralytic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Good little uh, podcast that, wasn't it? For a little bonus episode. The plan was to have Rob Bishop in there as well. Then when I started editing through it, most of his stories came from working in 1996. So I didn't want to kind of jump between the two files. Yeah, we are sharing those though, aren't we? On, on, yeah, on, on social media. On Twitter. So people yeah, come on out. Twitter. There'll probably be a bit of Rob Bishop in this episode at some point. And he spoke about all sorts of things, didn't we, when we did Bish. But yeah, that was... Tony Daly on Monday, big one on Tuesday, little bonus episode out to kind of wet the new, Is this a new kind of reworking of Craig David song? <laughs> Just letting people have a bit of context, mate, again. Let me, allow me the context. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm excited now. Are you excited? Yeah. Uh, it's been a bit of a slow burner. We've, you know, we've all been struggling post-Southampton, haven't we? For, yeah. For, for, <laughs> a bit earlier than that, to be honest. For heart, yeah, but particularly <laughs> post-Southampton for, for part of the week. But I think it's a cup final, isn't it? It's almost a kind of free shot to nothing. Yeah. You know, so why not? Why not go and, uh, go and have a goo? Go and, and have uh, a goo. Go and have a goo and see what we can, see what we can do. Oh, I'm a poet. There's a, a clip from Talksport yesterday that I don't think you've seen it, but I've, I asked you about it earlier. Um, and you accused me of lack of research. You, you asked yes. me about it, and I still haven't seen it. Yes, I am. But it's a lack of research on my own part as well. Are we allowed to play the clip for the audience from Talksport? I'd rather for. Um <laughs> For copyright reasons, you just paraphrase. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to find it. Please say it's okay. Alan Brazil, so you've got so, an Alan Brazil voice. No, it isn't. It was the other guy that I don't even know what his name is. What is, is it? Adrian Durham. Adrian, Adrian Durham, yeah. He said, there's a few quotes in the tweets, so I'll just say those. Aston Villa have no chance. They should put out a weakened team. They are not going to beat Man City, whatever team they put out. What do you think of that? I think it's just somebody who kind of knows his audience, doesn't he? A bit of, <laughs> bit of, bit of, bit of rabble, yeah. knows his audience better than his subject, potentially. He's a bit of rabble rousing, really, to try and uh, provoke a reaction. And you, you by, by feeding me the question, you, <laughs> I've done it, haven't I? you're almost doing that, aren't you? I, I shared it, I retweeted it, saying, I know that they're doing this to get a reaction, and it's a shameful attempt at doing so, but it was working because That's I've it. tweeted it, and I'm annoyed at myself yeah. for sharing don't it. Don't bite, don't bite. No, ah! but I have to, you have to say something, because like, if football was as cut and dry as they're the, they're the favourites, they win every single time, yeah. the football wouldn't be football, would it? We might as well just hand Man City the trophy now. It doesn't work as much as, yes, Man City are the massive favourites in this game. We are the massive underdogs. Yeah. 99 times out of 100, Man City will win this game. But that's that one out of 100 where Villa somehow well, of course, get the free you know, like, so and that's it, what we support it'd football It'd be the for. stage of the third round draw where they'd be drawing the, the balls out of the hat and they'd say number 33... 
Liverpool, the winners of the competition, <laughs> yeah. play number 46, <laughs> Manchester City, the runners-up of the competition. Yeah, exactly. Open top for us, us parade will take place. Yeah, of course it's. In early September. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of sport, isn't it? The, the yeah. unpredictability. Uh, and, you know, let's face it, if, I don't know, a plucky team of postmen... Um, <laughs> who play for... So this is not, starting for us on Sunday. Pl- yeah, pl- plucky team of postman electricians and and plumbers who, who play for Crawley get drawn away at, I don't know, at Anfield in <clears> the <throat> third round of the FA Cup. What do we say? Oh, I don't think we should turn up to this yeah, one, exactly. to be honest. You know, well, why should we bother? Why don't we play the kids? You know, yeah, that whole thing about a weakened team. It, the, the point was they should play a weakened team because they're more concerned about relegation. Well, to surely the problem players. is that we played a weakened team all season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that's what's got us into yeah. got us into this situation. It's just silly, isn't it? I know they're doing it to get people to call in and to get hits on social media, and I am providing that and I'm giving it airtime. You know, I'm giving them exactly what they want, but people are saying like that's Dean Smith's team talk uh, team talk sorted now that we're the massive underdogs and the fact that everyone is uh, saying it's like yeah, Man City walk in the park that should be enough to fire the players do you want to know my team talk can I, can I read it yeah, yeah go for it we, we, um, me, so, me for, and Ashley Priest and uh, James Rushton put our, put our this, cloud of blue bonces together is this why, yeah. where I wasn't involved yeah, but you're more of a kind of multimedia man, aren't you? Rather than you know, we're the we're the wordsmiths, aren't we? Okay, you know, we've yeah. kind of got our smoking jackets and our quills. Before, before, before we talk about what what you're about to say, a little bit of a set dressing our own. Oh, for yeah, seeing, yeah. seeing as Adam Wright's not turned up, we have got a scarf which we'll come on to in a minute. Because yeah. this podcast, by the way, called Claret and Blue. I don't think we've ever worn anything Claret and Blue related we've before. Both got the memo today, didn't we? So, mine's, mine's more like salmon pink, salmon, and salmon blue. But you know, <laughs> yeah. you, need, you need to stand up to show the blue bit. I think, but you don't have to. Oh, he's done it anyway. A little bit. <laughs> going to take it off. <laughs> I, I don't think they want to see. My, I don't think they want to see my claret coloured moves, mate. I don't think that's going to get anybody in here. <laughs> give them Wembley favour. And then I was uh, gifted this jacket. Uh, last week so I was like yeah I want to wear that on the podcast gift you the jacket as a freebie from someone yes from someone that we're not going to talk about <laughs> well, let's moving on uh, uh, anyway so what were you get, saying get some colour get some get the mugs out get the scarf out and you've got yeah. a physical physical news well, like say, we've, we've, we've dropped a big dollop of claret and blue on it today because we know that we're all going to be dressed in black <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's going to be really moody <laughs> moody music on Monday um so yeah, we've. Um, I don't know whether whether our younger younger viewers and listeners. I don't know, know what that is. Well, this is this is called a newspaper, right? Okay, and it's a bit like um, I think this is going to come back in fashion in about <laughs> ten or fifteen years. You know, how vinyls come back in. Yeah, oh, yeah, vinyl! Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. My dad used to have have, have, have some of that. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be like this newspaper you newsprint. Can buy yeah, a physical I remember, story yeah, I remember my granddad having that. Right, um, okay. Yeah, so we've so got that, a, is that like a, new, a web article, but it's physical. Is that, is that the deal? It's funny you should say this because last, the last Wembley trip that Villa made, but last year we did, <coughs> obviously it went rather well. Yeah, we yeah, won yeah. the match. Fantastic scenes, Clown Blue Carnival. You were there. Yeah, I was there. Um, so we did, um, we did a pull out, we did a print pull out, a special supplement that I don't know what it was, 24 pages or something. Nice and um, big, photo- get one of big photographs. I've got one actually waiting for you. Oh, I meant nice. to, I'll, I'll drop it around tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so we did it and, and people were saying, Oh, this is this is brilliant. You know, it's great that we don't we don't get bombarded by by adverts and you know other clickbait rubbish. You should do this more often. I was thinking, you do actually know that we produce a paper yeah. six days a week and a, a different title on a Sunday. But anyway, there you go. Anyway, we've produced. I thought like that was a bit of internal internal. Uh, oh, it was. I'm just kind of <laughs> this industry. <laughs> anyway, anyway, what I'm saying is, yeah, we've produced this. I don't know whether that's gonna you're gonna pick that up. I might get a shot of it after. Get a, a close up on it. If I can be bothered. Sixteen page pull out, um, yeah. free with today's Birmingham Mail. Nice. The Evening Mail in Old Money. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's just that Villa at Wembley. Yeah, it's making you know, a deal of it. Let's shout about it. It's good. Let's let's get excited about it. So we've got a bit of Big Ron and Tony Daly in there. Yeah. Um, Savo Milosevic, uh, one of our guys, has managed to to track down to get him to um, relive that screamer from back in 1996. Nice. Um, and what I was on about was team talk. So me, yes. me, Ash, and James Rushton have done our team talks. Should, which one shall I read out? You can go with whatever you want, mate. Oh, let's have a look. Want to find it? Just right. remember that this is a podcast. And you need I to speak. Know, I know. You can just. You can just. I'm just going to do film, it. Can't you? Yeah. Just film. <laughs> this is um. This is James Rushton. Okay, I'm so. going to bring this round here. People wait. Need to listen. Right. Okay. You ready? Move it back in a minute. You've got one shot to turn over the beast. That's it. 
City have played us twice and thumped us. This isn't about relegation for once. It's about glory. That and a bit of sweet, sweet revenge. Or oh, the tried and trusted classic from the Football Manager series. I know a lot of you will be keen to avenge what happened when we go, when we last played Manchester City. Go out there and express yourselves. Nice. So, can I read mine as well? Yeah, yeah. Are you going to do the voice, different voice? No, because it's a, it's a bit of a plan Al Pacino <laughs> from, from any given Sunday. Go on, I, don't go really, on. I haven't really got that range. <laughs> um, so this is, how I've, this is how I've set it up. Go for Let's it. get Dean Smith to... It, to channel his inner Al Pacino, Al Pacino, <laughs> if you like, by ripping off a bit of his rousing speech from any given Sunday, this Sunday. Three minutes of the biggest battle of our professional lives. All comes down to today. Oh, let me start again, because I know you're going to cut this bit for, for social, so it's got to be slick. <laughs> Three minutes of the biggest battle of our professional lives. All comes down to today. And either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the beep kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. Nice. <clears throat> nice. Four-nil defeat. Oh, I've written all over it. <laughs> You're not going to read Ashes out? Oh, God, Come on, you've got to mention Ash as well. I'm getting gotta... myself bogged down <laughs> under the microphone here. Um, in the interest of uh, fairness to my colleagues, <laughs> yeah. Ashes, very, Ashes is very short and to the point, actually. Forget what's happened. Everybody's writing us off, not giving us a cat in hell's chance. We went toe-to-toe with them at their place for 65 minutes and gifted them an easy win at our place. Go out there, put it right, and become legends of this great club. Yeah! <laughs> Is that what you put? Just loads, loads of ahs at the end. didn't put the air on the end, but I was just I was, I was very, very motivated by it. But, um, so, yeah. This podcast. <laughs> what's going it's on? Just sort all the technicals at the same time. Um, yeah, I like that. I like all three of those. Shall I tell you why I like them for each different reason? Why do you like them? Because they're my different voices? <laughs> no, not the voices. I'm talking about the, t- the content. I like Ashes, short and sweet. I like the get, make yourself a legend of the club. Yeah. I like that classic line. I think Dean Smith said something earlier about um, Graham Fenton and people like this have wrote themselves yeah. into the history books. It's now your turn to go yeah. and do the same. Classic line, love stuff like that. Your one. What was it? Al, Al Padino? <laughs> I've already forgotten it. I like it, but I've already forgotten Al Padino. Al Padino. Yeah. yeah, I like it for that. That's Just it, really. It's got a really lame pun. Yeah, it's a classic. Not because it's inspired, no, inspired you. Nah. You don't feel in temper at all. God. No, nah, not, not because of that. I, I like that quote as well from the film. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen the film, but I've seen the quote. A no, times. I've never seen the film, but I might um, watch it. But Al Padino, strong. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Big, big fan of that. It's good, that. And I like uh, James, just because he's managed to get a football football yeah. manager reference uh, in there. Classic. Again, like that. It's what we do. We cover all bases. It's a shame that you've not asked me to do one because I've got a great team. Do one, team. Nah, come, come on. on nah, come on, let's do nah. one. Leaving it to myself. Go and win. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually not given it any thought. I, I don't know what I'd say. Do you know, remember you could do those things a few years ago where you could send in a message? Yeah. I didn't even get to do anything like that because I can never think of anything clever enough. I don't want to just send something it's rubbish. Clever does not just need to be stirring. No, you want to do clever, don't you? Like you three have all got a different angle there. I don't know, I don't know what I'd offer. Yeah, and then you can plan why we don't ask you for these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be useless for anything like that anyway, and you know it. I um, think Big Ron's eclipsed us anyway, hasn't he? With his, yeah. oh, he, he yes. looks down the barrel oh, of the camera and kind of. Uh, I'm going to put it in here. So, 14 minutes, I'll remember that. And he comes out and he's like, Wembley is a day for glory or whatever it is. And I was sat there and I was like, oh, yes, like I'm ready to go out and get a shirt on and play myself now, let alone anybody else. Do you know one of my favourite things about the Big Ron thing? It was. Um, Love that this is just self promotion at this no, point. No, but it was. I, I, rocks, I really enjoyed it. Took me on a really kind of great trip down memory lane. But it just the, the one thing, Dean Sanders. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I've never heard it pronounced like that. He's always pronounced it like Dean Sanders. I remember when, when Villa signed Dean Saunders from um, <laughs> from Liverpool back in the day. Ron Atkinson because the, the deal was Villa were dragging their feet I don't know Doug was kind of quibbling over the extra mm-hmm. kind of 10 pence Probably. expenses or whatever but Ron Atkinson took it upon himself to take to the, the pitch I think it was before a game I think it played Crystal Palace I might be wrong if I am I'll be told um, but he came on with a microphone and on the pitch and said you know don't worry we're going to sign we're going to get this signing over the line we're oh going to sign Dean we're going to sign Dean Sanders and I'm just thinking <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> I, I think he might be the, the one with the secret recipe. I think he might be the Colonel. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's what, maybe he was introduced as Dean Sanders once and Ron just thought, yeah, it must be that and just, just ignored everything him. else. Yeah. Just go with him. I think, I think he, he called him Steve as well <laughs> in the podcast. <laughs> but he's 80 odd. Yeah, so. he was great. He well though, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think he's, you know, I, I went to see him. I've been to his house as well. I went to see him <laughs> a, a year ago. Considering he's kind of knocking on a bit, 
he's, he looks well and he's, he's, he's recall yes. other than pronouncing Saunders he's, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's bright as a button isn't he yeah so. he's, uh, you know I didn't have to do much editing in terms of oh, I don't know what I can't remember what to say yeah. or anything like that yeah he was he was good just on this briefly for me I said to this to you before we started so you have to humour me for the podcast it's weird for me to see part of my work in physical print don't know why I can't explain it because we made that podcast as a video and a podcast yeah with that intention to, to see it written up and the quotes that I heard in real life now typed up and they're in a physical piece of paper that's I don't know something like that weird. Though, without being too um, getting too deep into it the, the souvenir special that we did last year after the playoff final win <clears throat> you know we sold thousands of copies and we were getting people all around the world getting in touch with us yeah, like yeah, expats yeah. wanting wanting this copy because it is it's a, it's a tangible physical yeah, yeah, actual something nice about souvenir it, yeah. um, and God you you unlike me to go off tangent and go, go off at a tangent but even things like taking photographs on your phone and stuff like that now why don't people walk, you know why don't people print off photographs anymore it's things know. like that I just it's, yeah. all this world happens in this kind of this digital oh god I forget it I'm just an old man <laughs> just forget it no it's nice to have something it's weird for me to come out step out of this <laughs> to come into this yeah yeah true can't get away with this kind of crap <laughs> I'm there in there trust me <laughs> Imagine if that. Imagine if the articles were a similar theme of the podcast. I'm halfway Jesus through the article. Christ. You just start talking about food and stuff like that. God, we'd have Greenpeace. No, we're not wasting trees for this. We're not. Halfway okay, through. you're producing your own manure, but we're not wasting trees for this. Halfway through a big run article, there's just a, a, a tangent where about your lad's Sunday league That's football it, yeah. just for no reason. Imagine that. How weird did that be? I think we should do it. Um, so see, how, see how close attention the sub sub editors play. Yeah, just, just yeah, drop yeah. a few things in. My favourite meal deal is a turkey sandwich and a coke. <laughs> Just see yeah. if it gets in. I'll fight for the back report and put this paper. So, while we're on the topic of it, if Villa win, you know, God forbid the, yeah. the impossible happens yeah. according to talk sport. Stranger in pronunciation of the word when then, by the way. You <laughs> nice. Pronounce it if. Nice. <laughs> when Villa win, what's the plan for this kind of thing? Do we do a, a massive oh, 100 page special? Listen, you know that I'm the master. next week, doesn't it? You know that I'm the master of planning and spread. You've been in a, a, a content meeting with us oh, today. That's so boring. You know that I'm a master of planning and boring um, spreadsheets and documents and workflows and efficiencies and all the other boring things. <laughs> I'm not jinxing this. We'll do a wing it on not, Monday. I'm not, not, so there's nothing planned for it. We've done it before. Well, we've, we've, you know, last year, I know it's a different competition, but yeah. last year we've got a, a model to follow. <clears throat> um, True. So, yeah, Monday, not only will Sunday be very different for tens of thousands of Villa fans if Villa win, Monday <laughs> will be very different for tens of <laughs> yeah. Birmingham Live, Birmingham yeah. Bale employers if Villa win, uh, compared to if they lose, when Villa win, yes. compared to when they don't lose. <laughs> yeah, good save. So, 20 minutes into this podcast should we talk about the actual game a little bit instead of talking about ourselves we haven't been talking about ourselves we've been talking about Ron Atkins haven't we and the yeah, state the state the, the change from the print media to the <laughs> yeah, we are, that's literally talking about us so let's talk about the game I, you know the documentaries I was on about in the previous podcast yes, yes, I also yes, yes. watched the Bross one Oh uh, yeah. Have you seen that? Nah. No, no, fair enough. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Why have you mentioned that? Because it just popped into my head the other so day. That, that, that was literally that was what I was talking about. Just I was just <laughs> dropping that into a written article for no reason. Anyway, uh, let's, talk about, let's, talk, let's talk about the game. Should we explain that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, now people are definitely going to want to know why I was laughing at it. You use your imagination. I thought he said Ask something me in the else. Comments. I thought he said something else. Not pews. I thought he said something else. <laughs> anyway, back to the game. Back to the game. Villa are massive underdogs, obviously. Yes. What team are Villa looking at? What's our best? If we've got to pick a team between us now, if we do position by position, first of all, formation. Do you want me to go through the one that I uh, picked? Oh, you've already done this, have you? Go on then. Sorry, mate. You know me and my then? friends, me and my quint, quint friends did so, it. Yeah, I've got nothing planned. You lot have already done your right, prep. So this would buy, be my... You got the, they've got to speak into the sorry, mic. Sorry, Put sorry. it in the middle. Put it in the middle. I can't read that far. I'll read it then. No, no, no. <laughs> I need to do this. I'll get you a drink. <laughs> this would be my team. Okay. Um, Bosnich, <laughs> Southgate, oh. McGrath. No, 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 I did actually write that. Wanna, oh, did you? I'm a, I'm a japester. <laughs> you're lose um, do you, I want to I go through it position or position there. All right, I okay. want to have an actual conversation about football here. Not okay. just real off names. Neuland. Yes, agreed. Do you want me to tell you my thinking? Yes, because Pep Guardiola said, Villa have got a strong team. I've like Pep Guardiola mixed up with Pepe Reina. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm coming on to him. I've got a strong team, they've got an experienced keeper in Pepe Reina. And I've read that and thought, he ain't going to play. So irrelevant, Pep. Pep's not done his research, is what that tells me. He thinks oh. Pepe Reina's playing. Well, I hope he comes back to bounty on his <laughs> Spanish backside. <laughs> Or any other nation's backside, you know, I'm not a xenophobe. 
<laughs> so, agreed. Nealon plays in goal. Yeah, I think for I think that's he, the biggest kind he of deserves, point, isn't he it? deserves a crack at it because of he was just sublime yeah. in the semi final, both legs of the semi final against Leicester, and also <clears> you know I don't want to be harsh on, on Pepe Arrani because I think he's been fantastic, but I think he, even his standard slipped slightly at Southampton. So that's the way I'm justifying that one. Um, what about you? You agreed on that? Yeah, I'd play him. I think there was a talk a few weeks ago about if you play your strongest team. Arguably, Pepperano is the stronger goalkeeper, but Nealand's a massive reason why we even got to the yeah. final anyway. So you, I feel like you have to respect Do you think that. Dean Smith will go with Nealand. I think so. That's what I would. Well, after I've seen that football manager, that's what I would do. I think the the confidence he would have, having got us this far and then being rewarded with the the trip to Wembley and, and playing. And yeah, the, I think he'll try and even up the pep factor. <laughs> Pepe versus Pep with a pep talk two, two bald headed Spaniards with a pep talk drinking Pepsi Max <laughs> okay you've done that to death uh, no, watching Peppa Pig uh, okay. <laughs> I, thought you had, I thought you were done but you had one more is that done. you're done uh, yeah I'd like go peppercorn sauce do you <laughs> <laughs> what a joke I would go Neyland yes but is it or Neyland Neyland okay. but I would if, he, if Pepe Reina was on there you wouldn't go oh no not Pepe no, Reina I so. don't think there'd be a massive well there will be a massive meltdown because it's Aston Villa and it's 2020 and it's social media but yeah yeah. although it's a big decision for Dino to make I think we can understand yeah. whichever side he yeah, falls down 100%. on basically so three at the back still I've gone for 3-4-3 three, three. Um, okay, there so is a surprise but I'm not springing it just yet yeah save it um, the three would be Konsa Engels and Mings agreed that's what am I, I being harsh on Courtney or no I don't think he's been that good for the last few weeks. You know, I can keep seeing. I can keep seeing. You know, when when Villa fans started self-deprecatingly mocking ourselves and the team at yeah. Man City and started play, shouting Olay because we kept oh, yeah. the ball. Yeah. And then he just knocks it to it. Uh, knocks and, uh, it to, uh, it back. <laughs> to Aguero. Yeah. Yeah. Not <sighs> great. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't think he should be dropped for that reason alone, but I just think <laughs> the, the three that I've said I think would they fill me the with more confidence. Backs. I think Courtney Hawes would... If you'd assess the squad at the start of the season, you would have said Mings and Engels as the first two. Yeah. Constance's third choice, Hawes is fourth. Yeah. Hawes has only been playing one because Mings got his injury, so we needed the three centre back yeah. system and he had to play. I felt it was harsh not to bring Engels straight yeah. back in in place of Hawes. He comes in for whoever it was. Was it the game he got punched in the head, Engels? And then he was dropped after that yeah. for Southampton, I think. Yeah. Um, whereas I feel like Hawes probably has deserved a drop for a couple yeah, of weeks I don't, so. I don't think he's been terrible I think whatever combination Villa have played at the back and this is not not, not exactly kind of uh, optimistic stuff but we've con- conceded average two goals a game mm-hmm. even when we've played our strongest back three. two three four <laughs> yeah. five uh, and we've av- we've averaged 4.5 goals conceded across the two games that we've played <laughs> Manchester City but yeah. do you want me to get back to my Al Pedino and start <laughs> start really that again yeah, up again. Uh, so that'd be the back three yes um, agreed. start with the left the left, uh, left do we not back. go right to left yeah but I feel like the right is the way the, the choice comes in okay um, you're right um, <laughs> yeah Matt Target yeah it's on no, the, no one else is it on the left pretty um, obvious <laughs> Neil Taylor is not going to get a surprise start I wouldn't have thought back. it would be a surprise if he did if he did pull that one out of the bag <clears throat> I've gone with Douglas Louise and Connor Hurahan oh, oh hang on a minute you've totally bypassed right, right wing oh, sorry, back I thought we're going across the, we're not going to do the whole team and then come back to right wing back I thought we're going across what would effectively be the midfield no yeah we've got to go back over to the oh, right, right side so, right okay, let's, let's go back to the right side yeah. uh, I'm bringing Elmo back yeah so am I yeah any particular reason <sighs> I'll come to it. I'll come well, to now, it. I'm no, 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 no. I'll come to it. I'll, I'll, I'll explain my thinking. Okay, right. Well, I'll I'll, in a bit. Okay, I'll wait as well then. All right. right um, give me the rest of your team. So far, we're in full agreement, which is good. Yeah. So, we've gone for the central midfield of... So, this is a four. Is it Douglas Louise and Conor Horan? Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> That's a... Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not... I don't know. Is there enough energy? Is there enough bite? <sighs> I don't know. I like Connor a lot, but he's not been playing the last few weeks. I can't don't don't you remember if you kind of roll back and we've gone for Connor Hurraham that first game back with a point to prove. <laughs> yeah. If he'd come back and started last week, <laughs> you'd have dropped, we'd have dropped him. <laughs> no matter how well, well he'd have played. <laughs> but oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. But Fired up for it. I thought he was brilliant. I thought one of the best games I've seen him play was at Wembley last year. And I know against <sighs> Derby County <laughs> in the player final is a different proposition to against Manchester City. But I thought, I thought, probably a bit of a false dawn and this is harsh on him because we know he's got a wand of a left foot and we know he's a set piece specialist but 
I thought that that performance at, at Wembley last, whenever it was last May, he was energetic. He got a little bit of a bit of bite about him. Done well in the semi-finals as well, hasn't he? Obviously, I think it was. I think it was that. And listen, again, it's easy doing that. Not easy, but it's easier doing that against Derby than it is against Man City. But Mm -hmm. I just think, why not? Let's try. It might be a set piece that that gets is our only our only route to goal. Yeah. Um, So let's throw him in there. Let's hope that the Connor first back, first game back factor. Does the job? Yeah. Um, well, there was a little bit of a rumor in the in the last couple of weeks about all oh, McGinn's back sometime in March, and we all kind of said, "Oh, March, maybe he'll be back for the first Smith said he's not, so it was never never going to happen, and he was never. I don't think he was ever going to come back and go straight back in and start the final anyway. But it would have been a nice little wild card home on the bench just in case. But. Alaska, yeah, I think it'd be a better option to have him on the pitch for the last five Premier League, league games of the exactly, season, yeah. potentially. Yeah, agreed. Um, so, Douglas anyway, Louise, he, yeah. he scored at Wembley anyway, McGinn. What more does he want? Yeah, true, agreed. Uh, yeah, Douglas Louise would be a definite starter. I would put Nakamba in next to him. Instead of Hurahan? Instead of Harahan. <laughs> Harahan. <laughs> Get the correct pronunciation after speaking about it for yeah. the last two minutes. But I would, also, <laughs> I would also have um, Grealish back central as well. Do you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's he? What we going here then? What, what, what's your shape? So it's either three five. It's a three five two, with either Jack playing in the midfield next to those two. Yeah. <laughs> pointing at things. Douglas Luiz, Nakamba, and Jack. Yeah. Is a three, or it's Douglas Luiz, Nakamba, and Connor, or yeah, Connor because there's no one else. Yeah. Would have been McGinn with Jack playing off the striker. Rather than out wide, he's been effective out wide, but I feel like having two central forwards, yeah, or you know, a, a number nine and a number ten is better than having people stood out wide, yeah. not really doing anything. Um, what I've gone for, and this is where the wild card comes in, and why I didn't want to talk about Elbo, Elbo, Elmo. I don't know, I don't know, me, um, my house, my, my horse from my uh, from my Elmo, do awful, I? awful, <laughs> awful. awful. Um, this is random I'm hoping and I'll explain this so you've got Trezor game for the Egyptian connection no, I haven't no okay I've got Gilbert oh playing gosh. further up the field right okay I've got a front three of Gilbert Samata and Neil Jack Taylor. Really. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's go proper random <laughs> and I'll tell you I'm going to read out again I'm not going to put my reading voice on but okay that's interesting okay as for playing Gilbert in an advanced role you put your reading voice on allow me to explain okay for a start, Trezeguet and Anwar Ghazi have blown hot and cold. Yeah. More randomly, Claret and Blue Nostalgia leaves me desperately clinging to the hope of Smith pulling out a left field, big Ron, Fenton like tactical masterstroke. Yeah. Admittedly, that selection involves packing the line up with defenders, but considering Manchester City are beating Villa 9 1 on aggregate so far this season, that might not necessarily be a bad thing. <laughs> that, that's my justification. That is, that is the man in the pub talking but that's not a, I was about to say it sounds like Steve Bruce which is yeah, fair <laughs> man in the pub um, oh, I don't know I, I don't think it would happen for, for no I don't think it would happen but it's a nice and nice I thought. think that I think Gilbert defensively has been a little bit um, suspect of late and yeah. I think Elmo is a steadier safer pair of hands for the for the right back position uh, for the, or the right wing back position yeah. if you like Um but yeah, I can't see it happening. Ask the questions, but we've never really answered them because a lot of the things I ask you are just things that I've kind of taken in from reading my phone. So someone said about, will there be a, a Graham Fenton-esque um, thing from Dean Smith? And obviously you've already mentioned it from your, the paper that you keep plugging. Um, <laughs> you noticed that, did you? Yeah, I've noticed it. Everyone else has noticed it. So um, cool. Yeah, so if I was just throw kind of a wild card um, decision out there and I don't know whether he's fit or not, whether he's trained, is Keenan Davis as an actual two up front with Samata and Davis, Grealish back in the middle, and then you've got Nakamba and Louise kind of as you, as you sit us. Grealish to get the ball and control the ball for the 10% of possession of the, <laughs> of the ball that we're about to get and allow him to try and dictate things with two focal points centrally rather than relying on Trezor guys miles over there yeah. or El Ghazi miles out there not really doing anything. Yeah. Um, obviously Man City's fullbacks are going to bomb on because that's what they do. So you, any pace you, we're relying on is going to be off our fullbacks or wing backs but if we're sat back defending anyway they're not going to get any chance to get forward so I feel like having two strikes up front is more beneficial than two wingers out there um, but obviously Jack's been effective as, le- as left wing 
problem with Davis is that we don't know whether he's fit or yeah, not. Yeah, it's a big ask to get him straight back in to a cup final on a big pitch when yeah. you know we know that he's, he, his body creaks more regularly than it should. I'd love to see Keenan Davis at Wembley. I remember kind of wishing you'd have been available, been available on available for the the uh, easy for me to say for the playoff final against Fulham when yeah, yeah. when kind of Lewis Grabham started to t- started to tire and Scott Hogan went on. It was a bit. Mm. You know, much of a muchness, really. I'd have loved to have seen him evolve that day. Um, I hope he does make it. I hope he makes it makes it for the bench. Yeah, um, so I think you're right. It's going to be um, a thankless task if Samata is left isolated on his own and yeah. he's the one who's got to make the ball stick um, and play off himself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'd like to see us go back to three in the middle, just because we've been dominated in midfield with the two against poor teams. So that's why. Like all the stuff in the build-up, Man City the favourites, blah blah blah. blah. It's obvious, isn't it? We're not going to sit here and go, "No, we've got, we've got a great chance here," because we're not stupid. But we're not also going to sit here and go, "Oh, let's just not bother," because you still there's still a chance. But if we play in as a naive manner that we have been in the last few weeks against Man City on Sunday, they will absolutely batter us. Yeah. But I'd like to think in a one-off game with a bit of um, bit of nous about us that we'll change it or maybe put an extra man in the middle, sit back, sit the the wing backs back a little bit and try and take a little bit of that pressure and just play on the counter and hope for the best yeah, like you I said think, if it's a set um, piece or a, a dodgy VAR penalty I don't even know if VAR, VAR <laughs> blah, 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 if VAR is in actually but it only takes a silly thing to, to go wrong doesn't it for, for the games to change so you can't just look ahead and go Man City victory done forget it yeah I mean I things think, change I think Villa uh, the, the Villa Park game got caught between two approaches they didn't know whether to press high or yeah, whether, yeah. To, whether to sit off and I think half the team got one memo and half the team got a, got a different memo well, the problem with that and if we do the same again Sunday is we didn't make it difficult for them to do it like, like the famous interview we keep plugging Big yeah. Ron said you make it difficult for Man City you make it frustrate it make it annoying at least play it long like yeah. at Villa Park you think we're not trying to do anything yeah. here if you try and stretch it and, and run your strikers down the channels and stuff like that you're going to have some kind of chance. It only takes a magic spark for Jack to get the ball on the edge of the box and curl one in like he did at Old Trafford yeah. and all of a sudden you've you've scored out of nowhere. So Yeah, I mean, it's okay trying to play a high line and, and put, put Man City's defence under pressure. That's fine, but only if you do it effectively and yeah. you do it one follows the next, follows the next, follows minutes. the next. If you do it and you get it wrong, you're just leaving so many spaces that it can just pick you apart. Yeah. It can just kind of, you know, it's like... Um, it's like a colander, wasn't it? There were just so many holes for them to exploit. Yeah. Um, we're not, not going to sit here and run through Man City's team because they're all great players, aren't they? There's no point saying, oh, if we do this, De Bruyne's going to get in there and he'll cause you problems. Oh, yeah. Obviously, De Bruyne's going to cause you problems. Yeah. Like, we are up against it, yeah. but you've, you've got to go Sometimes there we had a big game. We do kind of a joint 11 uh, the, of the, the two teams. Yeah. Um, Jack Grealish will get in Man City. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Grealish and 10, yeah. <laughs> ten others. Yeah. Um, so... It's a weird one, isn't it? Because I don't think I'll ever... Well, trying to think of other the other games at Wembley I've been to. There's Man United in 2010, but I never... I, I've, yeah, there's never been a game that I've been to like this where we've been such underdogs and everyone thinks we're going to lose. I can't remember another game like that. I don't know whether you can think of any from years gone by. Not to this extent, Obviously, really. we had the whole thing in 94, didn't we, about yeah. Man United going for the treble. They, but Villa were a different team, obviously, yeah. to what they are now. Like it hasn't been that. I mean, I don't know what the, the latest odds are. What, what, can you, what can you get on a Villa win? 11 to 1? I think, it was, to I one? think it was so sure, 16 at one point somewhere, I think. Blimey. Because I, I, I think someone said I put a five on Villa to win and it's 15 or 16 to 1. Can I have a quick look? It's worth it. <laughs> I think it's worth it for a fiver. You struggle to make me part with anything more than that. Yeah. You'd probably struggle to make me part with anything more than that for a shirt or a pair of shoes, to be honest. How about a scarf? Nice well, segue, that. I was actually into the, into, the, into the scarf thing. Do you want to talk about the scarf? Yeah, let's talk about it, because I can't bother to find the odds. They're long. Or are they short? Which one is it? When they, is it long, is it? They're long. Yes, they're long. <laughs> Not a betting man, wouldn't I? Um, yeah, so we've had this little prop on the table for the last 40-odd minutes sneakily positioned in a way that you can't see what it actually is the scarf in it <laughs> was it microwave <laughs> what I mean is that it's just, just a villa scarf mate I really love that that's my favourite ever garment that villa scarf <laughs> well before you get too excited on the other side there's a Man City badge <laughs> oh no I've only bought a half and half scarf oh that's horrible what do you think I'm going to try and get out of the way you talk for me I think it's minging to be honest around. I think it's minging I feel like I've just signed for the club <laughs> You're halfway there. <laughs> yeah. I like I like half of it. Yeah, it's um, it's a scarf of two halves, isn't it? 
it's weird, isn't it? The half and half scarf. What do you? We, we've definitely talked about this before, but talk about it anyway. What do you think, think about these a, things? I think it's a a very weird concept. It really is, isn't it? To be it? honest, uh, why would I want to turn up at Wembley with this on half of my my body? Yeah, Man City. Like I've seen worse ones for a start. The Birmingham Coventry thing. A few. Yeah. Why would I ever want? another Midlands team club on my scarf but it's a, t- it's a tourist fa- football fans collector's item isn't it really I know, um, but what are you going to do with it when you bought it I don't know what I'm going to do with this when I've got it I don't know why I bought it a suggestion um, <laughs> it's like uh, I've probably used this crap analogy before it's probably like it's like going to the ballot box and thinking yeah I'm going to put a tick next to Boris and next to Jeremy Corbyn you know both got things <laughs> yeah. it's ridiculous you, 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 oh, where he goes it's a nice scarf Look at the materials, good. I'll let you touch can you it. Do it so you can hide this. Hey, I don't know. Is that because if you just got a little slither of blue? This man sees blue. It looks so. like a claret and blue scarf. Yeah. If you try, if you well, obviously I can't see it. Have I yeah. done? Does that look all right? Looks all right, mate. Yeah. Do you not tell that's Man yeah. City on yeah, you're there. Right with that, yeah. I look like a proper football fan. I know <laughs> all my colours on at the moment. Yeah, so it's a nice scarf. Nice material, nice and soft, quite warm. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> touch that bit of it. Oh, it's a nice, nice quality. It is, isn't it? Twelve pounds that cost. Oh, look at it though. Twelve great British pounds I'll never see again. It's just, yeah, I don't know. It's a good prop. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we bought that for a podcast prop, and it's a joke. Yes, it, it, we have. It is a joke. <laughs> I bought that as a joke. What a loser I am. But yeah, I might wear that on Sunday. I'd like to see what people think about half and half scarves. I'd oh. like to, or maybe we're being too harsh. I'd nah. like to kind of okay. test the water. I think, think most, and I'm going to put these in air quotes, normal football fans think that half and half scarves are a joke. But they sell so many of them. So Do you know what I find? People are obviously buying them. People are buying them because I've bought one. I think these, these scales and degrees of how bad half and half scarves are, I think for yeah. a cup final, probably get away more with it. Or if it was like a pre-season friendly match or whatever, you could get away with Oh, more you think you could for a pre-season as well? Again, you think I mean, if you're on tour like in um, yeah, okay. Dallas or whatever, because mm-hmm. I think I've actually got one oh, from, no. from Houston Dynamo oh, no. that I bought back from myself. But I think the worst thing is when I look through our picture library where all our photographs go from the Getty and stuff that we get sent from around the country at various things. And I look in there sometimes and these kind of these Liverpool versus Burnley you've got Jurgen Klopp Sean Dyche half and half with their faces next to each yeah. other so some of those at Villa Man United this year Dean Smith and Solskjaer and thinking, like, what's the point <laughs> who's buying them it's just random isn't it? who makes them I don't know but I reckon they're uh, they're doing okay out of them for yeah, some reason who bu- nobody buys them they obviously but they do, keep though. producing them it's got to be supply and demand there's got to be somebody yeah there must bu- be just people you people, people, people I bet you've probably kind of the profits have gone up by a million percent just by buying one <laughs> Let me know if anyone else has bought one of these. If anyone else who's listened to this has bought. <laughs> I'm going to take it to Wembley and hold it. I'm going to hold it up like that with both ends so people know that I'm a true football fan. Anyway, back to the game then for the last couple of minutes before we go. Because it's Friday and I would quite like to go home. It's only half three. But <laughs> um, prediction. Are you willing to put a score line down? I'll put one in there. Have you? Go what on, do people buy today's... Um... <laughs> Today's to Birmingham Mail available for more good stockists. What a, what a teaser that is. To find yeah. out your score prediction, they've got to go and buy a newspaper. Yeah. Or they could wait until Sunday evening and find out an actual score. It's up to <laughs> it's up. I thought you were going to say, like, find one of those in a bin or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a frame. <laughs> go on then, score line. What are you saying? I think I've gone for 2 1 Villa, but that's Have because you? my, uh, my yeah. heart is rolling, rolling my head, to be honest. I've said the same. You know, I think I've actually written in there that uh, don't put your mortgage on it. In fact, don't even put your pocket money on it. Um, but yeah, <sighs> why not? Exactly, why not? If football was, like I said at the start, if football was as cut and dry as the favourites win every time, there'd be no point to, mm. to following sport as a whole, let alone football. So, as we're a Villa podcast, I'm going to say yes, we're going to win. Because well, I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to lose. What's the what point? What score are you going with? I've gone two one as well. We're not going to keep a clean sheet because it's Man City. No, but well, yeah, let's somehow sneak a two win, two two one win, like last year. Was it two one last year? It was <laughs> two one. It was two one. Yeah. Good, so, good research. Repeat yeah. of last year. I'm, wear, I'm in the same block. I'm wearing the same clothes. I want the same yeah. score line. I want to see a Villa trophy. I want to see a trophy with Clarence Blue ribbons on for the second year in a row. See, eventually we got the team talk out of you that we wanted, didn't yes, we? Yes, <laughs> love it. Exactly. So we just had to get you there, just had to just warm had to, you up, warm to, you up with your half an hour scarf just and get to, you there. Just had to warm you up for 48 minutes before I say anything of <laughs> use on the podcast. We got you there. So I think that brings us to an end, doesn't it? We're all very excited. 
also very very apprehensive yeah. because we're all feeling the worst. Down, but we're driving to Beaconsfield or Beaconsfield. I don't know which how you say it, and then getting the train from there into London or into Wembley <clears throat> about midday, I think. Yeah, I'm going down on the coach. Exciting. How's own bus station? Ah, uh, no, mate. I'll get on the number nine instead, and end up back at work. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, excellent. I yes. am looking forward to it. I am as well. I'm yeah. really looking forward to it because... Because unlike what Big Ron, Big Ron said, it is a day out for the fans. We will enjoy it regardless. And I think that's, a, a you know, talking of Villa fans for a sec, if we do lose and we get battered, well, maybe not if we get battered, if we lose and we've had a good go and it's, I don't know, 3-0 or 4-1 or whatever, I still think the fa- our fans will be quite jovial around, the, uh, oh, you know, in the ground obviously as well. Yeah. They'll support and sing for the rest of the afternoon. They'll have had a few drinks by then obviously. But even I think like on the trains back and stuff, back in, in Houston and stuff like that, you'll see videos of fans singing and kind of taking it in their stride that it's not the end of the world is it losing to Man City in a cup final. There, there's bigger priorities. Some people would say the cup is yeah, important. Don't, but, we know, we've got enough does, time. Does we've got enough time matter, next week to put a bright face on it if it doesn't go according yeah, to plan. Let's if, go there and let's believe and let's think we can. Uh, yeah, exactly. We can end that long tro- trophy drought. Yeah, yeah, see my first. Tro- I could be seeing my first Villa trophy in forty-eight hours' time. How mad's that? That's exciting. That's a nice thought, isn't it? Oh, just imagine if we could, uh, you know, saying Tony Daly having a sip out of the trophy and he got him drunk. I will probably be able to afford the same amount of alcohol by <laughs> Wembley, tro- by Wembley prices. I won't be able to have one sip of a pint of um, punk IPA or something if I can get that. And uh, that'll cost me about £47. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hate the Wembley prices. That's the one downside to this this football at Wembley thing. Very expensive. Yeah. Probably like 12 quid for a couple of burgers last year. Yeah. What? Ridiculous. I might just have kind of I might just have a, a little bottle of vodka on the way down take some sandwiches just or something just put it in my eyes <laughs> <laughs> yeah save that see how it's going after the first 10 minutes just start pouring it in uh, yeah so we'll call it a day on the podcast it's been a very busy week of stuff so if you've missed anything I'm exhausted done, mate to be honest yeah I'm a little bit tired as well looking forward to a drink after work um, so we've done podcast on Monday which is irrelevant so don't know why I mentioned it we had Big Ron and Tony Daly talking about 94 which came out yesterday I'll put links yeah, everywhere that, that you need to see it. We were making love by Wednesday, <laughs> and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. We don't on. start those rumours. <laughs> you don't, started them. Don't start those rumours. Uh, Wednesday, I think it was, we had Adam Wright come in. And we we talked about dressing the same as well. Uh, we? Stop it. We talked about the 90s, which was a nice trip down memory lane for you two and a nice little learning experience yeah. for me as well that you had to have a physical ticket back in the day. Who, Amazing. Who, who, who'd have thought it that your Willy Wonka story was true? <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, yes. Love that. Validation. I told you it was true. My dad said it was true. See, I wish I'd have believed you at the time because if I'd have believed you, I'd have got in touch with our archive department and I'd dug it out properly. Well, you could have dug could it have out written, anyway since could then. Have written a story. No, but there's a process. You've worked here oh. for a few months. There's a process. Yeah. Things happen yeah. <laughs> in slow motion occasionally. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, we'll do it now. We'll do it in a few weeks. Yeah, we'll do it for the next cut final. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that story was a good story. Well, I it was true. So happy days. Uh, and the podcast uh, with Big Ron, I've already talked about was yesterday and then obviously this. So busy week. Thanks for sticking with us. I hope you've enjoyed our stuff this week. I've definitely enjoyed making it and working on it and spending the long hours sat in the office on my own. Da, 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 <laughs> Over, overworked, da, 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 overworked, underpaid da, da, is my role here. Da, 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 Black da, and white. Da, 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 da. <laughs> enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's been a good week. Hopefully Villa will give us something to cheer Can about. Can just say one more thing? You, on may, you may, in your kind of jiggery-pokery editing skills or what do you thought about this are you going to put a bit of uh, Ron and Bish Ooh, I'd forgotten in this <laughs> we'll stick it on the end yeah <laughs> we'll close with that so when we did Big Ron Rob Bishop and Tony Daly I also asked them what do you think about Villa versus Man City to just get there's only like two minutes but chuck it in there might as well make the most of what you've we get you've got this far you yeah. might as well <laughs> if you've got, got this list of people who make sense and if you've not seen that we'll also put in the messages that Tony and Ron delivered to the, the team uh, Ron's rising uh, speech for his team talk we'll yeah. stick that in at the end as well so we'll uh, thank everyone for listening and tuning in this week we'll be back on Monday with another podcast win or lose hopefully win and um, yeah we'll hand over to Big Ron to talk about Man City cheers cheers Ron if they try and make it a classic football match in terms of trying to out football City they they for me, they'd be committing suicide. Mm. They've got to go and make it as attritional, even ugly, if you like, frustrate, annoy, play off the front, bounce it past the strikers, get the strikers running down channels and turning people like Otamendi. 
I said, man, the, uh, the, the Laporte doesn't look as if he's on the game. No. I mean, the best, the best centre-half they seem to have at the moment is, the, is Fernandinho, who's arguably their anchor man in midfield. John Stones, I don't know where he's got to. Mm. And the, the, the very fact that they play both full-backs so far ahead, you know, uh, Walker, if it, if it is him or the other kid, Mendy, I'm not the biggest fan of actually Mendy. I think he's a bit erratic. Um, I, I prefer Sivchenko to him, but um, I think they would have a chance. Yeah. I think if they try and start shoving it into midfield and playing little bitty balls, they'll get picked off and, you know, Aguero only, you know, any sort of chance he's going to tuck home, isn't he? You know, they were, they were doing quite well in the league at the moment, obviously. That, that's going to have to be the priority. Uh, I think everybody would take, if, if you, you were offered now, will you stay up or, or if you won that went down like our neighbours did a few years ago, I think everybody would rather take a respectable defeat at Wembley and, um, and stay up. I think realistically, it's, it's going to be very, very difficult, but you just never know, do you? I say to the players, uh, go out, uh, enjoy the day, and if you produce anything that I know you can do, you know, then uh, we'll come back uh, with winners' medals. I hope we wish you all the best and, and success with that. Go out and go out with a view to win. Go to Wembley to win. I know people say, you know, it's a day out. It's not a day out, it's a day of glory if you win. If you don't win and you give your best, you can't do anything more. They have a chance. It's a fighting chance, and that's that's got to be the operative word. But you, at Wembley, you never know. There's been upsets. I do hope that they make it very, very attritional. That's going to be, to me, their best way of uh, of getting a result. Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue and Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your thoughts and comments. We'll be back soon with another episode. Until then, up the Villa. <laughs>